one of Herb O'Brien's original presses from, from the Hyperlite factory. Come on over here. So this is one of Herb's, Herb's troops presses. This was press number seven. So I think there was a bunch of orders that got built. So I imagine this was sort of early days, water ski, whiteboard, and the thing. So uh, I'm blessed to have it here, you know, and for me, I honor and respect Herb O'Brien. Herb O'Brien's guy came up with compression molding. He's done a lot for this industry. Herb, every time I press a board, I think about that guy. I mean, he was, he was an amazing gentleman that, that really brought a lot, a lot to the industry. So, you know, with this mold type system, you have the rams and everything that, that do all the pressure. Well, come here and look at this. Right now, it's 230 degrees, this is. So basically, not only do we use pressure to force the board, we also use heat to cure it. So epoxy normally has about a four to six hour cycle time before it really packs up and even starts to become hard. In this, we cycle it about 15 minutes from full wet out to rock hard. So it's, it's a real cool technology that they did. Um, this, this mold right here is the Byerly Flex for 2015. So I just got this in here two days ago. So right below here, this was uh, my Butch Customs, the original AR1 mold. So something that we do here every time, I cut a mold that's a different size, a different width, a little different spec than even what goes in production. So I like to have a version of the production board, but I like to have my own unique mold. So Every glass is unique, different. Every resin is unique and different. So depending on what I'm trying to do, I'll use a different formula each time. And I start off with a board bottom down. And on this board, I'm also, can you hand me two of those black gloves right there? I'm gonna use a resin tint. I'm gonna use pigment in the resin, and that's a lost art and surfboard. So we used to do a lot of the stuff uh, with coloring in the resin versus coloring in the foam or graphics. So on this board, the sidewall shows all the way around the board. So since it shows and I didn't paint the core, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna tint the resin a color so it helps cosmetically look the way I want it to. So it's one of those things where you got to be on your game and really pay attention to it. In surfboards, I mix all my resin with a scale, so it's exact, but it's in such a smaller quantity. Uh, I use I only use 12 ounces a side on the surfboard right here, very little. But a surfboard has so, uh, so much less glass to it that you know you use a lot less resin on it. This has a ton of glass. This right here has about 10 times the amount of glass on it is what a surfboard would have. Really? Yeah. In the surfboard shell, that's it right there. I can take my finger and put it right into that EPS core. So I hot wire my own blanks uh, out of that block and that's what starts to be a core for a surfboard. And that's the same exact core system that I use in the buzz. So for me, what I really like about the buzz, it goes back, it's definitely got a little bit more surf history in it in the construction methods as well. You can take any board, hit it on the rail on the ground, and listen to the difference between how solid a barley board sounds and how boom, rigid it is. That's all due to the way the glass is laid up in the sidewall system. Slider in the mold.